Good evening, I am Pete, also known as Risk for Awards over on Twitter. So tonight I'm here to talk to you about the Cheltenham Festival blog because as we all know, we are closing in on the Cheltenham Festival. It is in fact two weeks on Tuesday. The blog will actually also be released two weeks on Sunday. So for anyone who's not interested in the Cheltenham Festival blog or the member section or anything that I'm about to talk to that you can see on the screen I have tabbed it along the bottom so you can just skip because I do have a bit on the entry Grand National and selection and an outsider for that race um, but you can skip straight to that if you've got no interest in this so anyway back to the Cheltenham blog thank you for everyone's input from the banks and blowouts video that's how it already had over 2,000 well it had over 2,000 views in the first 24 hours I haven't checked to see how many it's had uh, since but there's so many comments on it loads of likes really appreciated it and I'm glad I know I do go on a little bit at times I'm just trying to empty everything that I have inside my brain um, just with regards to the horse racing just to try and basically explain things as as simple as possible i know some people are a lot more advanced than others but at the end of the day when i came to racing i wanted someone to explain things as simple as possible and there was quite a lack of it i know there's a lot of people doing it nowadays so but i'm just putting my input out there going forwards especially with regards to the cheltenham festival entry festival punch town festival and also for the um, flat season i'll be doing a lot more youtube um, i will have other people on I know it flows a lot better. You get a lot of input going back and forth. Yesterday was just poor timing by myself and I just had to work with what I could do with. Um, so that is what it is. But today it is just myself. Um, so I will try and keep it a little bit short and concise. Um, but today I'm just going to explain the Cheltenham. This is obviously the Risk for Rewards website. There are plenty of members already. Um, but for people who are looking to join or looking for Cheltenham Festival selections and the Cheltenham Festival blog itself. So as you can see on screen, this is the Risk for Rewards website. This can be found at riskforrewards.co.uk or if you're a Twitter user, just go to my um, uh, Twitter profile. It's pinned there. You can click there and it will take you straight through to this um, website. So what is the Risk for Rewards website? It has been going five months. It will be going three months longer and then that will be it for the national hunt season. Um, it's gone very well so far four months of profit one month with a slight loss i could have tried to put up a few selections on the last few days to try and bring it back it was only like i think it was minus 2.5 points loss but at the end of the day i'm not there to just tip random things i only put up weekends not necessarily weekends but the high grade racing so i just took that loss and you just move on it is what it is um we are in profit at the moment for this month but obviously we have still got a weekend left to go as everyone knows, the main focus for me is always on the Cheltenham Festival. So that is why this website is focused around everything to do with the Cheltenham Festival. So without further ado, let's talk the festival. So this is a quick flick through of the website. So I'm not going to butter it up. Some people do not want to pay for content. Totally appreciate that. This is £20 a month, so I'll get that out of there straight away. Doesn't matter if you're looking at the Cheltenham Festival only, that would be £5 a day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 75p a race to simplify it as much as possible. But even if you are only paying for the Cheltenham Festival and that is your only interest, um, at the end of the day, if that is all you want from it, you'll still be subscribed for a month. So you won't just have the Cheltenham Festival content, you'll have the build-up. So if you were to subscribe this Sunday or whenever, you'll have the build-up for the festival. So as you can see, as I'll talk through briefly, there is a lot more on there already. And after the Cheltenham Festival, it'll obviously finish on the Friday. The week after, there'll be the Cheltenham Festival debrief blog, which will go through every single race, any runners I note, horses that I just tick straight off the list and I don't want to be looking to back, horses to note for next year, anti-post for Cheltenham 2025, anti-post for Aintree Festival, anti-post for Punchestown Festival, and any horses to follow. So selections for, say, the King George, the Grand National going forwards. And it just flows. So that will go. And then two weeks later, it'll be the same again. There'll be an Aintree blog. The Aintree Festival will then have its own review, exactly the same. Then the Punches Town. And then everything finishes on May the 11th. That is the last weekend. The last weekend will be the weekend that the Punch Town Festival finishes. There will be no flat apart from that weekend. That has the 2,000 and 1,000 guineas. I will give full selections on both those two days. And then that finishes. The week after, there will be a review for the Punchestown Festival and the 2,000 and 1,000 guineas. And that will give you a little bit of flat insight, but it will also give you the insight going forward for next season. People who have subscribed will also be in part of the Risk for Rewards uh, Antipost private Twitter group. So that's been going again for the last five months, only for people that are already subscribed to the blog. This will flow through the summer for the next five months. I'll be having a much quieter summer. My selections will obviously go on YouTube and on um, 
Twitter like they did last summer. Um, but the people who are in that private group, they will get first access to those. Um, so basically, I've just spouted very fast. But at the end of the day, this is let's go back to what this actually is. So what is risk for rewards? Simple. As you can see, it's the website. There is a results section where if you click the results section, all this is, this is as basic as it comes. My selections from the last, well, when the service finishes this year will be seven months worth. I will put all of those selections, uh, sorry, all of those results will be uploaded at the end of the season. Anyone who's currently in the system already or is a member already, they have access. If they message me, I email them across. Um, but currently, it's, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I do not know how to put them on an Excel spreadsheet and put them up. However, they will be up by the time I come back at the end of this year. So by the time the end of May, hopefully, they will all be uploaded, the seven months of results, the Cheltenham Festival results. So it's a lot more in depth. But currently, there's just a video that explains through my last three years, which at the moment, these are all the Cheltenham results, which is all anyone realistically is signing up for currently. So they are on there. Um, how to use a site. This is just a, a really short video. You click that, you can watch a video and it does a talk through in, I think it's about two minutes or five minutes, a lot less depth to what I'm about to do today. Obviously, join today is as explained. You click the racing calendar and the racing calendar will talk through everything I've just mentioned. So if you subscribe, say tomorrow, what you are getting, the Cheltenham blog, the Aintree blog, the Punchestown Festival, when the, when the system, uh, when the membership will finish for the summer so at the moment there's three months left of the service and obviously it is festival season latest news has been brilliant latest news is where i put all the latest news to an update it's like me putting up a, a, a twitter i'd say but it's where i put a little bit more in depth so like for example today i put an update on gala Marceau, and i'll put in there and i'll say right due to gala Marceau doing this this is the implications of how this could affect the cheltenham races um, if you're looking to bet in certain races, you may want to do this or that and stuff like that. It's just a short, punchy thing, not going into a blog. It's the easiest way that when I put an update on the Twitter and say, on my private Twitter, I say, check the latest news. You can then go across, check the latest news, and it will say, blah, 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 blah. This is live and interactive and daily. But below this, as you can see here, is these are my most recent blogs. So this one, Cheltenham Handicap Update and Weekend Preview. So last night I put a handicap update of, I think it was four races I covered for the Cheltenham Festival, a short list of a few horses you don't want to be plunging into right now, especially not without the weights. But if you've got a few free bets or you want to have small bets or get involved early on, then it's just got a few that you want to keep at the top of your tracker. It's also ones that I'm obviously focusing on so that people can look at. And if the weights come out on Tuesday, and I've already said you want this horse to be, say, a mark of 140 when the Irish ratings come out, they don't even need to wait for me to say, they say, OK, he's already said this. I'm going to back this myself. At the end of the day, I'm not there to tell people back this, back this, back this. But I provide the information so people are already a step ahead. And in effect, if they got the weights before me, they'd be a step ahead of me in effect. Um, weekend review. So every Sunday slash Monday, I'll do a review. And this is a review of all the horses from the last weekend, horses like, say, La Homme Press. How do I think last weekend's result will implicate his chances in the Gold Cup? Um, a horse like Etalon obviously is going to skip the festival. Do I think it has a good chance at Aintree, etc., etc.? And then obviously they're updated on Tuesday with the handicap marks as well. Um, Anti post Cheltenham Festival preview. So they're just bits and pieces. Obviously, we had the Factor File saga a few weeks ago where they're talking about Turner's and Brown Advisory. So this is just a blog explaining how the fact of file situation was affecting both races any bets that i would advise people to take any bets i've taken myself and how his position in each race may affect it and obviously the dublin festival festival racing review so that was obviously an in-depth review of everything at the dublin race festival horses to back going forwards horses that i couldn't have on my mind for the festival etc etc i feel like you're kind of getting the point um, obviously, I'm not going to click these because it will just give all the information away. And I don't want to do that because it's not found subscribers. Um, Non-festival anti-post shortlist. So this is horses such as horses for the King George. Like I've put up two for the King George. Um, Aintree Grand National, as you can see. But I'm not going to talk about that horse anyway. But it's just horses that aren't Cheltenham related. Um, Cheltenham 2024 anti-post summary. So I click this and it'll have an anti-post summary of all the horses I've recommended as free bets. All the horses that I've had as advised selections that I've placed myself. Um, and these will all be on a shortlist summary here. This is the free bet shortlist. So exactly the same, but just a shortlist. The difference between a short uh, a free bets one is they're a lot looser. So they're horses that I've like, say for the Supreme, you could go for four or five horses that are all 20 to one or bigger um, because you don't know they're definitely going there. You don't know how fast they're going to improve. 
Whereas if you want to be looking at, say, a supreme selection hardened down, you want to know it's going there. So like an example for this, this isn't one I have put up as a hard and fast selection, but say a Firefox, you know it's going there. It's nine, say seven to one or nine to one or whatever. You know, like you can, whereas in reality, in the supreme, there's so much water going under the bridge that you don't know a horse is definitely going there. So th that's just a complete example, but that's the difference. But these below, Chapman Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they're selections I have had. So one that would be example, say in the Triumph, like you're looking at, say, a, in fact, I don't want to use a Triumph because it just looks like I'm blowing my own trumpet. Um, uh, say at the Cheltenham, the Wednesday, the champion chase. So you say El Fabiolo, put up at, say, 9-2. to two, that, that is a horse that I knew was going to be a, a main selection all season. The same with John Bonner as a cover bet for him. Um, and they're hard and fast selections that I've backed with my own money and there is no coming back from those. So any in those, they have been backed with a hard, hard and fast cash. Over here, we go to risk for rewards anti-post notifications. So this developed within the first month. So it started off with, I had no idea how all this was gonna be done. I've now got, if you sign up through WordPress, you can have the emails coming towards you. So every time a new blog goes live, you'll get an email through on your email service. There's also an ask risk for rewards where people can ask questions to myself that comes through either through email or Twitter. Um, and then this has also got the private Twitter, which only has, once you subscribe, I can obviously then see that that person subscribes, just your name, I get very minimal details. Um, everything's controlled through WordPress. Um, but obviously with those details, I can then um, add them in, that you add yourself to the Twitter, I approve it, and then obviously you can see all the notifications. Just means it's exactly the same as following on Twitter, but it's a much nicher group. If there's a price that goes up, it doesn't disappear like that because there's such a small amount of people within that group. Um, previous blogs and content. So as mentioned above with the latest news, all the blogs, once they're done, they go across to here. And this means that if people say, if you join today and you're like, oh, what did he think about that horse? You can go back to previous blogs to see what, what the opinions were. Um, and Cheltenham Review, this was last year's review. So this was the review of all the racing. It just allows people to go back and see what was his opinion. Obviously, this was the first area that was processed on the website and is obviously very much outdated now. But I've left it there for users to see. But the most important, if you're not a subscriber and you do want to know, is something I've put up uh, today. And that's this. So this is a free content example of blog. So free content is the December Gold Cup. This had the, this, the selection of the December Gold Cup. This was a free thing I put up. It did have the winner, Fugitive, which obviously is very convenient to put one up when you've winner, you've had a winner, and obviously also had Mon Morale. Um, but that's just an example of how the, it flows. But more importantly, for people who are looking at signing up to the Cheltenham T Festival 2024, you want to know what you're signing up to. So below that, so if you click come here, you click free content, click Channel and Festival 2023. You can do this on your mobile phone or a laptop or whatever you want to do it on. And you scroll through this. This is a lot of the general content of what will be provided. Very, very similar. But this is exactly what you'll be getting. So this was Channel 2023. So it's looking at 2022 winners, 15 winners from 28 races. It goes through, it explains everything. So it goes through my own points, having a plan, what you should be thinking, final pieces of advice that people don't ask for. Obviously, multiples. So I do multiples for the week, Tuesday to Friday, but also multiples for like one of each day. So as you can see here, just a random one, Corak Lamp, Rambler, Pembroke and Brave Man's Game, 505 to 1. So that wasn't a winner, but Corak Rambler won on the first day, which then put these two into the last. Pembroke was sent off 9 to 2 favourite and obviously ran no race. And Brave Man's Game finished second. So, I mean, that wasn't far off going in. And considering it was 505 to 1, I can't really complain in that. And then, obviously, I did have the anti-post multiples, so a few of these. Again, some, some, of them, some of them might go close, some of them not. This, another madness one, Nichols Madness. Hermes Allen was sent off 9 to 4 favourite, ran no race. Time White was in with a huge chance when falling. That would have been a 25 to 1 uh, winner. Brave Man's Game, again, came second. Like, so, these are just, like, obviously floating. The difference is as well, some people might be watching this and they say, I do not care about anti-post. All I want to do is just focus on that week alone. So there's my anti-post, but below, these are fresh. So these are the fresh selections that I picked just for that week only. And that's there will be fresh selections for every single day at the Cheltenham Festival. There are races that I still won't have had a bet in. And again, I will be in the same position as everyone else. But then it goes into the depth. So obviously background, statistics, anti-post selections, results from last year. And it goes on and on. And then I cover each race, each horse individually. So Fasar Vega, Ilate Tom, Marine Nationale. So all of these are my own, not my own opinions. These are 
a completely unbiased opinions. I'm just trying to go through and use them as an individual subject to give you as much content and detail. I had someone come up to me last year after the Supreme. Oh, what have I done there? Apologies. After the Supreme. And they um, said, oh, thank you very much for Marine Nationale. And I was thinking, I don't understand what you're talking about. And they said, I read your blog and I read the points on Marine Nationale and I backed him myself. And obviously me having not put up Marine Nationale, it wasn't my selection. I was like, it's great. But at the same time, that is what this is there for, is to try and give people the best educated decision they can make. So I'm not going to go any further on that. That That is all there for people to look at. It just goes into... Some, some say too much depth, but at the end of the day, you can choose how much depth. You can obviously cut out whatever you like. Um, and that will be released on the Sunday before the festival, so in two weeks' time. The sign-up links are there. The join today is there. I understand people don't want to pay for content, and I'm not here to force it upon anyone or to even encourage it. I'm just there to say, if you want my selections, because there were over 15,000 people viewing the blog, like what? it actually topped out over 20,000 people viewing the blog last year. So this is where it will be, and this is how you can find it. So anyway, on to the other side of things, and that is the Aintree Grand National. Let's get myself up in a slightly bigger size. So the Aintree Grand National. The Aintree Grand National is obviously, apologies, two seconds. The Aintree Grand National has obviously gone onto so many different talking points this week. Um, the main one is obviously people complaining about how many horses you should have entered for each stable. Um, and also the fact that um, it's been cut down to 34 runners. So the bottom line is, I don't want to keep using that word because I looked at my video last night and I used that too much. Um, people will look to the big trainers, William Mullins and Gordon Elliott, and they will blame them for having, say, 10 runners in the race. But the real issue is the fact that Aintree, to try and make things safe, which I've got no issue with, I, I really do want horse welfare is the most important thing and safety of horses. But by cutting it down to 34 runners, you have took out basically the little guy. You're, that's the only person you've punished you've punished the person who used to have a chance of being that 100 to 1 shot of getting to win the Grand National that's all you've done I've had a look through and all they've done is by taking out that bottom six is they've compressed the handicap and now I, my fear for this race is it's going to become very much like the Cheltenham cross country where you're just going to have a posh version of a handicap you look through now and you're looking at like Gordon Elliott's not worried he, I think he's got He's got about 18 entries and I think eight of his are in already. And that's without obviously going down the weights. The horses that are going to get punished are the, the small horses that can't get up above those marks of, of say, a, a 145, maybe even a 147. And it's looking like now, put it this way, last year's winner, Cork Rambler, was comfortably in. This year, you've got horses sat on the 40th number, so 40 onwards on 147 and they are not in the race because obviously you're looking at 34 runners so they're going to need horses to come out and that's what 147 so all you're doing is the the top guys with all these horses that could be or are gold cup horses will all comfortably get in and the horses that have tried to plan their season around it by winning good races or whatever to try and squeeze their mark in they are not going to get in so i mean they another thing is the fact that you look back and in say I don't know, 10 years ago, people would not dream of one running their Gold Cup horses. They would be in fear of risking such a horse or Group 1 winners and stuff like that. And it just shows the way the race has gone, the way it's developed, they've softened the fences, they've made it easier. Um, it just shows that there is no fear anymore. You, like you could get horses in the future, like I'm not saying now, like you could get horses where it becomes something like the King George, the Gold Cup and the Grand National. They could be That could be the treble that people want to go for. Um, yeah, it is over a further trip, but when you get a horse of that class and they're not high enough, the the handicap is compressed that amount. You might get Gold Cup winners. Obviously, they'll win the Gold Cup, but they won't be punished because the weights are already out in mid February. So you could win the Gold Cup and then you go up in the weights, and you get horses running off, say, I don't know, one sixty, one six five, who have won a Gold Cup, and they think, Do you know what, good ground, entries say a month later, you're like, we'll roll the dice. It could be their last season in training. Like they may only they may only run that year. And I just think that's that's the fear that's coming out of it. At the end of the day, it is what it is. So accept it for what it is. 34 runners is a shame. It's a shame. F I'm not going to say it's a shame for me because I still believe the horse will get in. Over the last three years, the horses that have won the Grand National, you have had last year was Crack Rambler off a mark of 146. Year before, Noble Yates off a mark of 147. Year before that, Manila Times off a mark of 146. 
Therefore, my go-to point straight away was to pick a horse that was around that sort of mark. The horse that I picked is off a mark of 147. That horse is Monbeg Genius. I put Monbeg Genius up at the start of the season. He was 33 to 1, or if you boosted him with like William Hill, you'd get about 36s. He went into 25 to 1. He ran deplorably on comeback and went back out to 33 to 1. The reason I picked this horse was because he just looked absolutely standout for the he was just tailor-made to get a very similar Corak Rambler approach for, for his racing. And what I mean by that is Corak Rambler last year, he ran, uh, he went, he went to Carlisle first, ran deplorably. He then ran in the Coral Gold Cup where he finished third, beating over 10 lengths, dropped one pound from 147 down to 146, freshened up and went to the Ultima for his second time. The weights obviously came out and that's him then printed in for the Grand National on a marker 146. He then wins the Ultima again for a second season running and then he obviously goes to the Aintree Grand National and he, I'm not going to say he bolts up because obviously you don't know how much he would, I think he idled in front um, and I do think he will have a chance this year and I have backed him obviously just from loyalty from obviously tipping him up and putting him up at 33 to 1 last year. Um, it will be obviously a lot harder this year but he was the starting point. So I looked for the horse that would have a, could have a very similar profile to him. So that horse obviously was Monbeck Genius. Monbeck Genius ran in the Ultima, the same as Corrett Rambler. Um, and he ran off a mark of 140. He was then put up um, to a mark of, I believe, 140. Yeah, he was put up to a mark of 147 after that run. So he turning in was going as well as fast or slow Corrett Rambler was obviously off the bridle but that's just the way he races which is why he's obviously such a suitable candidate for the Grand National um, and him and fast or slow were going very well coming to the last fence they jumped the last and he was out battled in the finish by Corrett Rambler and fast or slow so immediately you think yeah but he's been outstayed by two strong stayers um, but he's been outstayed at the end of the day but you look back to the fourth and he's put that the goffer jumped in amongst those those two three rivals and he put daylight between himself and the goffer eight lengths between there and the line so he was staying on and he had no issue with staying the trip the only issue is was he bumped into fast or slow who's now rated 170 having won the punchtown gold cup and obviously then came back and won the john durkin obviously i haven't got any notes because you can see my screen today so it's a little bit different so he's now rated 170 that's £23, obviously, higher. He At, at the end of the day, Monbeg Genius was getting, I believe, around £10 on the day. So he, but, but that horse has technically improved another stone plus, which obviously we expect for what he's achieved as a grade one horse. Correct Rambler now runs off a rating of, I believe, at 160. I have wrote it down. Correct Rambler, 159. So he now races off a mark of 159. So he'll get a further £6 than what he already got. So he got £6 last year and he gets £12 from him now. I believe Corrett Rambo will still have a good chance off that £6 higher mark um, against, obviously, Monbeg Genius. So on to Monbeg Genius's prep. My belief was that he would go for the exact same Corrett Rambo approach. A nice race where he'd run, not deplorably, but have a bit of a spin out, then go to the Coral Gold Cup where he'd again be beaten at hopefully 10 lengths-ish and his mark will remain unchanged. A lot of people were tipping him up for both his comeback and his Coral Gold Cup run, which had me a little bit concerned, but I just hoped and believed that John Joe was going for what I thought he would. And long and behold, fortunately enough, he has done exactly that. He had a spin out where he was pulled up and then he's gone to the Coral Gold Cup, ran a brilliant race when finishing third behind Marlon Mission. And I think it was That's All Right Gino, if I remember rightly, or was it Fugitive? It was one of the two. Apologies. I can't, I can't remember which one it was, but he ran a brilliant race, beaten about 10 lengths, mark untouched. So a lot has been made of he's had this entry and that entry, but ironically, we've not seen the horse. And long and behold, the weights are now out. He's now marked on that 147. And guess what? He's now entered to run at Kelso next week, or you'll see him in the Ultima. And then it does not matter how he runs. He can run to his mark. He can run way above. He can bolt up. Because just like Corrett Rambler done last year, his mark can no longer be touched now. So the plan, as far as to this point, everything has gone as I would have hoped it to. And listening to John Joe this week at the press conferences, at the entry reveal, um, it sounds like he's more than happy with the horse. And he's going to have a spin out either at Kelso or in the Ultima. 
I don't think, like Corrett Rambler, this will be him at 100%. I think he will be going there for a spin-out. He may well be good enough to win these races, but I think his whole aim will be the Grand National. It might be with a little bit of cut in the ground, will go perfect. But at the end of the day, when you map your season out, if it's good to firm, you're still going to take your chance. The only concern, obviously he is 20 to 1, so he is still a good price. The only concern I do have is that he's 43 on the list currently. And normally I'd be like, well, that's no issue whatsoever. He's bound to get in. But as mentioned before, we're down at 34 now. From 40 onwards, they're all on a mark of 147. So how they're going to work that out, like I don't personally know how they work that out, whether it's race, like as I, I generally don't know how they work that out. So, but either way, he's going to need around probably nine plus to come out. But I flick through some of the runners, like I'm not going to bring them up on the screen, but you look through a lot of the runners and there's a lot of runners in there that are going to things like the Gold Cup, the cross country, that basically their big targets are coming up in Cheltenham in March. And there's some that will have the Irish Gold Cup. There's some that won't run if it's not soft ground. Some that have gone will only run if it's faster ground. There will be lots of horses that come out. There'll be some that will unfortunately get injured. So there is going to be a lot of scope. So I know nine runners sounds like an awful lot to come out, but I don't believe it will be come the time. At, at the moment, at the end of the day, there's nothing I can do. But you you look at the expressions like when they were chatting to John Joe O'Neill and you hear the backlash and stuff. And it's not like they've suddenly gone, oh, no, we're not sure we're going to get in. It's just the fact that you are playing a waiting game because it's a 34 now rather than a 40 runner field. But also you've got a lot of horses higher up that pecking order where this this isn't going to be their priority. Like you could get um, a horse that's much nearer the top of the weights and they say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm too highly weighted. But at the end of the day, if you haven't backed him already, because obviously I have backed him, um, if you're using free bets, then that's fine. But at the moment, there'd be no rush to get involved because he's, his price is held at 20 to 1. So unless it suddenly starts changing and he shortens, which isn't likely until he's ran. And again, if he runs and it is a prep, then he's not going to run and it, um, as in he's not going to win, which will make his price shorten. So again, you're just marking time. But I just thought I'd get the selection out so you've got the option either way. I am on at 33 to 1. And I think a lot of people in the members area, they've been on at 33 to 1. And obviously they've had the best part of six, well, five months to... Um, just knock away with free bets at it. So I think he'll get in, um, but we are playing a waiting game. The other one of interest at the moment is Chemical Energy, who I do like. I'm not going to go into mass detail because, again, I, I just don't think it's worth it this far out. He's on the top of my shortlist and he's around 40 to 1. I just thought he had a very strong run last year behind Marla Mission. And if you like Marla Mission for the Grand National, who's about 40 to 1. Uh, chemical energy is close to 40 to 1 to 50 to 1 and he's better handicapped because he didn't run in the Newbury Gold Cup we know he goes well fresh with his strong finishing second behind um, uh, Galliard de Mesnil last year and the difference is that I think that will make a big thing for him is I think he'll really enjoy the flatter track at Aintree and I think he'll enjoy the faster ground that he's likely to get so I will cut it short there um, I'm going to put a bit more detail of bits and pieces up that's going on um, towards the weekend um, and yeah, good luck for whatever you're punting the next few days. It's a very quiet time. I had a look over in Ireland today and I'm pretty sure nearly almost every favourite got beat. Like we're talking two to five shots, eight to 15 shots. So for me, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but it is a time where I'd be treading very carefully. But whatever you're betting, whatever you're doing this week, enjoy yourself. Two weeks to the Cheltenham Festival. Oh, and another thing is I'm one step close to getting the, pre the um, Cheltenham preview sorted. I've lined up who will be on it. I've kind of got something sorted with who else is going to be on it. We just haven't got a date. We haven't got a confirmation. But as soon as I know more, it will be up. And it's likely to be on my, um, well, it will be featuring on my YouTube with a few of Twitter's finest, hopefully. So enjoy your week. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.